Hello Internet, I'm Dan. I'm Chaz, and this is our friend Albert, and this is Wine is Serious Business episode 311. Got it right? Yeah. Um, my, my housemate and I, Matt, have been making a uh, attempt to try to get all of the 2015 German Rieslings as they hit the Portland market. Um, and this is a show out of wines that literally we, uh, we purchased to drink at home just to find out. But like Dan said, why don't we just do a show on it? And it sort of makes We've sense, got, right? There's been yeah. so much hype around the 2015 vintage. Yeah. We've literally got over a case of Oregon Riesling that I bought to do shows with sitting just downstairs yeah. from us. We put it off again because we've got two other exciting shows going on tonight. Chaz had these picked out. They were literally open in the fridge. We couldn't turn it down. Albert wanted to drink some wine with us. We're like, Riesling is a great place to start talking about it. Uh, these are all from Von Bodum, uh, brought into Portland uh, through Scott Frank. So thanks, Scott, for representing this stuff. Bring it into our fair city. Yeah. And, uh, Scott and, Frank? Scott Frank brought these in? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So Von Bodum's based in New York, and Scott Frank's the rep in, uh, oh, in, in, awesome. in, in Portland. Yeah, thanks for bringing in such great wine. We really have a... a I can't talk today. It's fine. Yeah, the, yeah. Intro, the intro was terrible. I, f I feel totally like shit about it so far. So I was cut, good, I thought. We can cut all that out. If one eh, can. No. Gonna cut it all out. Let's, cut let's cut talk, that part out. Let's talk to you for a bit. How, how do you feel yeah. about Riesling? You know, I like him. Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with wine in general. Riesling has always been uh, one of the types of wine uh, that I've always enjoyed. Nice. So, uh, you know, I'm always learning more about it uh, every time I have it. Just because there can be such a variety, I guess, uh, not just the types of wine, but also... Uh, different types of quality with the Riesling. So Absolutely. much quality. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so our, so our first wine today is, is is one of the more famous producers in the world right now. Um, this is this is the Czar Riesling Barrel X from Weingut Peter, Weingut Peter Lauer. Yeah. Uh, we've got an interview with him a little while back. If I'm smart, I link it up. If I'm dumb, you can find it with a simple search. <laughs> Great interview. Interesting <laughs> it guy. It was. Um, the Czar is definitely known. Oh, right. yeah. Florian's an incredibly interesting person and was awesome on camera. So I, if you're interested in Riesling, specifically that producer, you should go watch it because the dude is like, he belongs in front of a camera, honestly. It's really it's well-spoken. Right. Really well-spoken. It was awesome. So. And the Czar is, is a little... Cooler, known for a little more crisp acidity than the rest of the Mosul, and, uh, and and we're excited to check these wines out. It's got a big range. So. And this is one that uh, it's it's just like his entry level Riesling, right? Did you say that? This and the Senior are both kind of like entry, entry level, level wine. Entry, I, I, for, I don't know what the order is or how they're related. I should. This is us being dumb on camera. Yeah, this then. this is one that I see uh, fairly widespread too. Like right. this one actually makes it to some supermarkets sometimes, um, and and it's. God, I can't talk today. It's alright. On the drier side. Do you taste much sweetness in there or no? Yeah, I definitely taste bit. sweetness. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a way nicer... So, I, whatever. I literally... I, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I can't... I, I think you're fine. You're just self-conscious. Yeah, cool. something's happening. I don't know. Try that. You need to have a little more wine. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. No, so... Um, I tend to drink this wine every year. Right, I, I get a bottle, I get a bottle or, a, or two, depending on how good it is, um, and and uh, I know 14 got some good press. I really didn't find it 14 that interesting. I don't know if you guys out there have had this wine did. Uh, I I didn't see it. This wine is pretty damn good, honestly, as far as riesling is concerned, especially entry level riesling. Um, great acid, good good core riesling flavors. The sweetness is on like the very low side, like it's almost dry, just sort of. Yeah, a little bit of sweetness kind of there tickling you, but uh, it's it's really tasty. I really yeah, I and mean, this is a kind of cheap bottle of wine too. It's like sixteen or seventeen bucks. Really? Yeah, it's not very expensive. So, um, Boy, and, and that's that's almost we're talking about that's almost in competition with like the Doctor Lucen L, you know, like stuff. It's uh, just above it. Just Boy, above that's it. A really. And if you're talking about a three or four dollar, or actually more, it's like a five dollar increase. I think this is right there. So anyway, my Dig it? Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's not overly sweet, which, you know, I'm not a fan of anything that's just too sweet. Uh, it's, you know, not too dry. Uh, it tastes good. I mean, flavors kind of just dance on your tongue. It's nice. It does. Yeah. It's really got that, that, the acidity is fantastic here, mm -hmm. but not, not ripping. It's just, uh, yeah, enough to keep it bright, fresh. And I think just that little touch of like pineapple or peach on the outside bring a little bit of sweetness, but it stays really pure, crisp, fresh on the mid palate. Um, you could drink three bottles of this back to back happily while hanging out. With friends, you'd drink three bottles a piece. 10% alcohol. You'd feel really good after you did that. Yeah. But uh, 
Huh. Boy, really nice wine. I didn't know it was that. This has to be their entry level one, but I'd recommend it to anybody. Yeah, this, is a, this is a great buy. Matt, do you remember it was 16, 18, 17? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it, was it was cheap. Like, it was less than 20 bucks. I know that. Yeah. Jeez. So, yeah. yeah, do yourself a favor, man. At that, at that price, it's great. Yeah, killer wine. So, you know more about this Damn. second producer that we're going to try two wines from. So, any information I would, you, you feel like talking about on the show, your experience with them in the past. Yeah. So, so this is this is a connection I made uh, the, the when I was when I was over in Germany uh, on, on one of my visits. I was visiting uh, Daniel Folenbeiter, another producer a rinse. Uh, in Traub and Traubach that I'm fond of, and we were talking about recommendations. And he recommended that I go talk to uh, the folks at at Weiser Kunstler here. Oh man, this is like um, also right on the other side of the river um, in that area, and, and we were able to to set up an appointment. Um, this is a couple that moved to the Mosa Valley just to make wine. So in contrast, a lot of the folks there are families that have been making wine in the, in the area for many generations. And they're newer. They moved to town, started taking care of vineyards that had been kind of abandoned or neglected, were less popular largely due to their steep slopes. It takes a lot of manpower to work, and they really made the effort in restoring these vineyards, taking good care of them, and trying to make high-quality wine from some of these vineyards. Been very successful the past few years. My bottom's picked them up. Uh, been a lot of talk about them, but I think rightfully so. They're making a great product, super friendly people to talk to. Um, check the wines out if you get your chance. Two cabinets today. Yes. First one is a 2015 from the Einkirscher Eller Group. I can't tell you anything about that vineyard. Daniel Emish, <laughs> if you see this, I'm sure you can give us some expert input. Uh, I'm sure there are other German experts that might see this and let us know. It's true. All right, let's, let's get this right out. Right in the middle mobile, yeah. <laughs> Nose is still pretty muted. These have been open for a couple hours. And that's true on both of them, yeah. The nose yeah. is definitely on the on the quieter side. It's alright. Is it is it just from what I was thinking about before, has it developed even like a little bit of a floral nose? What do you think? I'll let you judge. Do you smell like flowers at all? Almost. I kinda of see it because it's in my head, but Yeah, um, it might just be but, but power just a suggestion. pretty subtle nose. Yeah. I'd say the flavor on this is a little more low key. It isn't like um, oh, yeah. in comparison to the first bottle. The first bottle was like that sweetness kind of like was the uh, the dominant part of that. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one's a little more you know like a little more laid back, a little more balanced, a little more uh, I guess uh, less intense. Yeah, a little less yeah. intense. Yeah, like the the acid, the sugar, everything's dialed down quite a few notches from the last wine. This wine should have a little more sugar in it though than the la than the. Uh, the barrel axe, which is I think why we're doing a second. Interesting. But the fruit flavors here are just killer. Um, it's it's. Uh, I, I, go ahead. I, I'm gonna take another. Sure. It's thing. it's super delicate, and I think if I if we threw this out and did this show again, I'd switch the order because even though this one I think is a little drier, the flavors are still a little more forward. This one's really delicate, and on the back end, I'm getting more of that elegance. I'm getting a little more complicated fruit, a little minerality, and there was a nice floral sense that we both noticed on this. That kind of. Uh, on the nose and, and, the, and the front of the powder really there. But there's just a good sense of complexity and it stays light and fresh. Again, it's really easy to drink. Uh, real pleasant and I think uh, it inspires a little bit of thought, which is nice to see. Price point here? 20 Pretty bucks, much, yeah, 22 cheese. bucks yeah. or something. Um, yeah, so the, the fruit flavors, I mean, you got your sort of like typical sort of apple-y um, flavors. It's definitely more towards like the red apple, honey crisp apple, like a sweet apple. Um, I think the flavor that I'm seeing that seems really kind of out of place that I'm really liking is like a honeydew melon or like a green melon, like the edge of the melon where it starts to get a, like that, you know, that, that flavor that like melon rind kind of gets. Um, there's a bit of that and then there's like a bit of a floral tone to it. Like it reminds me of like white flowers that I just absolutely love. Um, definitely a complex, a complex fruit, uh, fruit, fruited wine. So uh, I think it's, I think it's effing awesome. Yeah. You don't have to believe me. It's good. <laughs> I, I am not doing much of that anymore anyway. Uh, the flower, I would, I would say, I'd call it, it reminds me of bear grass. Uh, I've been, been hiking in the mountains a little bit lately. This is a wine I'll buy. This is a wine I'll buy. It's just balanced. It's got, I mean, well, everything's sort of dialed down in intensity. The acid and the sugar are also down there with it. Um, it's just balanced. It's, 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 I don't know, this is delicious reason. Let it open up or not let it open up? Uh, what do you mean? Right, like this has been open for a while, and you feel Two like hours. it's better than it was when you popped it. Oh right? yeah, when I first opened it, uh, it, it was nothing. Like it literally didn't taste like anything. Uh, it tasted like a little bit of sugar and some acid, and there was no fruit flavor mm -hmm. to it whatsoever. When Dan came over, I poured him a glass. I poured me a little bit, and I was like, "Holy shit!" 
this has gotten considerably different. So once this one got a little bit of air in, I think it blew up some sulfides uh, way better. Have you had German Rieslings much before, or is this pretty new? This is all pretty new to me. Cool. I mean, a lot of the uh, the wines I typically have have been, uh, you know, California, kind of Northwest, Idaho. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, you've got Being Idaho. Idaho yeah. <laughs> I had uh, one, of, one, of our German, uh, one of our German fans commented that, that we, we, we asked a question about what are, what are the wines furthest away in the world, what's really exotic to you, and he said that the Snake River is the most exotic region he's oh, heard really? about. Because for a guy wow. in Germany to get a Snake River wine would be a lot of work. Right. right, like Absolutely. they definitely don't have distribution in Europe mm -hmm. or, or not Maine, much. Yeah, I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. Do you ever visit any wineries in Idaho? Uh, I think the only one I've visited is probably the biggest one to come out of Idaho, Saint Chapelle. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty well known. But it's a uh, you know it's a grown area there, so there's got uh, you know more wineries that are popping up. One of which uh, that comes to mind is uh, Cinder, which I think is cool. kind of could yeah. be the next yeah. up and coming one from Idaho. Nice, haven't heard of it, but now, now we have. So, a little inside information. <laughs> we do need to do a show on some Snake River wines and yeah. explore Idaho a little more because there's definitely wine there that's probably pretty interesting. So, And climate change will make it better and better, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All right. What do you think of that one? You like, did you like that, Riesling? I know totally you like so, that Riesling. So, Dan's, Dan's uh, the guy who got me into Riesling, so I always looked at him like, what do you think? Feel and like, and, and, and even the it? second sip was a lot better, and like I said, it, it, it's definitely elegant and light. Take some time to think about it. Don't drink it. If you drink it behind a sweeter cabinet or something stronger, you're going to lose the best of it. Um, right. But uh, at the point, again, at the price point, really nice. Off camera pour. Reach in <laughs> rinse. with the long off camera rinse. Ugh. Let's go for it. Come Challenge. on. No way, dude. This is Riesling. You got to experience it. It's purest form. All right. <laughs> and it's purest form. <laughs> All right. So the last wine we're doing is the uh, from the same producer, but this is the Wolfer Sonnenlei. Sonnenlei. Straightforward. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, and and Wolf is another small village right on the middle of Mosul. Um, not as famous as some of the others, uh, but there's still some great vineyards there. And uh, and I'm not familiar with this bottling, uh, but I but I'm you know excited to talk about. It. They've got this cute little owl on the label. Man, I, I feel like that's almost custom designed for the American market. Like that's that's going to be a big hit with almost anybody. Right. Um, maybe it's true with Germans too. Maybe maybe I'll love your animals. Um, the nose on this is developed quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. This is sort of oh, starting to smell. This throw off some, some peachy flavors. Um, the apple apple aromas. Yeah, crisp green apples on the nose. Yeah, it smells really good. This and is, the sulfur's really blown off of all of these too. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Still there, but I mean, it's like definitely uh, more fruit driven now. This has continued to get better as well. Wow. Definitely on the sweeter side of the two. That's really interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely a little more, a more intense flavor, right? Like, Big time. Um, this one's almost just distinctly apples to me. Uh, a little bit of Granny Smith. We're heading to, toward, more towards the tart, sour side of apples. Um, and that's really all it is, but it's got a big, long grip. I mean, like the, the sugar helps and the acid help extend those flavors out for a very long time. Um, quite intense. Nice Riesling. Not near as complex as the last one, but good. That's an interesting point. Do you like this more or less than the, the previous one? You know, uh, I don't think I like it uh, more or less. I just like it differently. Sure. Because, you know, the, the taste of it, the flavor of it is so much different than the last two bottles. You know, whereas this one, you know, you, you're mentioning that it comes has that like tartness to it, that sourness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was kind of the first thought when I was tasting it, is that it has that like green sour apple kind of note to it. Yeah, totally. It's more sulfuric too on this one. A little more? A lot more sulfuric on this one. And I feel like it's got so a little... You're more, you're definitely uh, sensitive to that. To that, super sensitive. It, it'll blow off. It always does, right? So. And it's, it's, it's definitely got like a, a creamy character to it that reminds me a little bit of like like light white frosting even where like the sweetness comes a little more to the foreground mm -hmm. um the acidity is coming in later i'm getting yeah like those those barely ripe green apples late um but it needs it to balance it out i think without this much acidity i think uh i think it'd be a little unbalanced towards the sweet side absolutely but as it is it's got a lot of uh it's got a lot of presence it's got a lot of strength i think in a lot of ways it'd be a good introduction to the area because even if you're not that familiar with wine um you're not going to miss anything with this one I thought this was interesting. Seven and a half percent alcohol for the last wine, and then nine percent for this one. Hmm. Seven and a half percent in in fifteen. Right. And that this one's higher higher alcohol. 
I would not I would not guess that because it seems right. standard too. Yeah. Um, anyway, but the flavors are great. The wine making is just fantastic on 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 all three of these. Like agreed. The quality and the in in the history of the region really comes through. This was the most expensive wine at like twenty six dollars. Sure. Okay. So and it, step it, it, up. It kind of t- it tastes like a spade. So really, if you blinded me on it, that's totally. What I'd say it was. Yeah. Um, if they were all the same price, which one do you think? Well, which one would you drink in a glass of? Yeah. Next. You know what? I think uh, this first one I I like uh, the most yeah. out of it. Nice. Um, but I definitely like this last one as well. Although I don't feel like I'd be able to drink this one as uh, as much as I would the first, or even the first mm-hmm. two, really. Yeah. This one, you know, just trying to you know change it up a little bit, get something a little different. Uh, you know, much like drinking a sour versus you know or a cider versus yeah, you know, yeah, regular yeah. beer. Yeah. Uh, in comparison to the first two. Yeah. I, I agree that like this one you could probably just drink a ton of, and this would be a little bit more of a struggle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. That's more of a, a maybe like a two glass, and you you've enjoyed yeah. it. Like, you share a bottle yeah. with some friends. Yeah, it's a good. That's or a good drink place it over the be. course of a, an um, evening. Anyway, cool wines. We look forward yeah. to talking about more Riesling. We look forward to talking about more Pinot Noir, and uh, and we got some some really weird Italian wines coming up in the very near future. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for sitting down and drinking some wine with us. Yeah, thank you for joining. Oh, shout outs. Sorry. Shout outs. And I have a question of the day. Okay. I'll just ask it. Shout outs. Andrew Weiss, you love that blue blindfold you wore during the uh the, the yeah. Does that ever get used? Is that, oh, yeah. uh, is that a sl- that's a sleeping oh, yeah. sleeping accessory. Nice. So it's not just I'm a di- for I'm decoration. A di- I work night shift, so of course it gets used. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. John Moser, always always good questions. He says he's got some really good method traditional sparkers in Illinois. That the government says he can't send to us. <laughs> but thank you. You also talk shit about driving Buicks today. That you're getting old. You might as well give up and drive a Buick. <laughs> I've been driving Buicks as long as you've been watching the show. Uh, they're not that bad. They're not that bad. <laughs> Scott Hollowell, we love you. What more can we say? Uh, Joel Strimling, love some Ulysses Colleen. Yeah. We love you too, Joel. Good taste. Thanks for coming. Unlike Bo, he's got good taste in champagne. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, question of the day. I was just going to ask, what's your favorite Mosul vintage? So, for me, it's 2010. 10 as well? Killer. Yeah, anyway. You got one? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.